party, people. 4.6, similarity and transformations. Welcome. As we go through a couple nifty new things here. Some got something old and something new for y'all tonight. And the old stuff is the things we've been working on. We're just we're gonna dilate, rotate, translate, reflect. I'm gonna show you a little bit of something new with uh, GeoGebra. And we're just gonna basically combine all these things. So let's go through this. Um, this is a, like I said, I'm gonna start you out with a little GeoGebra. So let's see what we got. And in class, I'll show you guys how to, how to find this. You just wanna Google GeoGebra. And it's the first thing that comes up. And we talked a little bit about this earlier in the year. I'm gonna start my calculator. Bear with me here. There you go. Go down to more. We want a polygon. All right, so we're just gonna start with a triangle in the old triangle worldview. And I've got some coordinates here. One, one, two, four, and five, two. All right, now what I wanna show you guys is this special section here under, so you scroll down, scroll down, under your basic tools, you got construct, you got lines, you got polygons, you got circles, conics, aha, transform. Transformers more than meets the eye. This chapter four is all about transformations and this, uh, this area of GeoGebra allows us to do some things so for instance, if I want to reflect, I'll highlight that and it pops up right here, select object and reflect. So say I want to reflect this triangle across the Y axis. Woo, look how cool that is, right? Now let's see, we can reflect about a point. Now let's do, ooh, let's rotate, let's rotate. So now let's say I take this triangle I think I might, hold on one second, let me back it up. Let's put a point at the origin, since all of our rotations are centered around the origin. I'm gonna start like that. So let's rotate this triangle around the origin. Now it's gonna, box gonna pop up. Let's do a little 90 degrees. It's gonna ask you what to do. So there you can see it rotates the figure. So that's how we rotate. Translate. We got to put a vector in first. And we talked about vectors in our notes. So let's put a vector in going from there to there, for instance. So that vector would be three comma negative one. So then back to the translate, I can take any triangle and translate it using a vector. So the triangle went three to the right and down one. All right, last thing we did was dilate. So let's dilate this original. Again, by the origin, and let's do like a 0.5 dilation. Okay. How's that? There we go. And it dilates. So the first thing we did was reflect. So this over to here. Next, we rotated it, we translated it, and we dilated it. So following those steps, my friends, you can pause or rewind the video as much as you need to. That's the way we're going to um, perform the transformation using GeoGebra. It's all right there. All right, so that's our little exploration today. That's what we just did actually using the this software. And let's get into the book stuff now. Performing similarity transformations. A dilation is a transformation that preserves shape but not size. That's right. It goes So we change the size of these things. It's a non-rigid motion. A similarity transformation is a dilation or composition of rigid motions and dilation. So basically just 
as you can see here in example one, we're just doing multiple things at the same in the same question. So the this one says, hey, let's slide to the right and up, and then let's dilate it. So we got that happening. Now you can use GeoGebra for it, like we just did, or you can just do it by hand. So a prime. I'm going to add 5 to the x's. I'm going to add 1 to the y's. There's a prime. B prime. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add 5 to the x's. I'm going to add 1 to the y's. C prime. I'm going to add 5 to the x's. And add 1 to the y's. Alright. Then we're going to dilate it. By a scale factor of 2. So from a prime, I'm going to double it. So 1, 2 turns into 2, 4. 6, 6. And 6, 4. All right, so again, you could use GeoGebra based on what we just did. Or you can do it by hand, like so. All right, pause the video here and try this monitoring progress progress question. All right, welcome back. Guess who's back? Back again. Now you got a segment. So let's see here. A 90 degree rotation. 90 degree rotation says switch the order and the sign on your new x value. Oops. Got a D right there. D prime. So there would be our 90 degree rotation using our rules for 90 degree rotations. And then scale factor one half, so a reduction. So cut everything in half right here. And there you go. So there is a similarity transformation. We did something to it that was a rigid motion. And then we dilated it, so it's non-rigid. Not too earth shattering, my friends. The last thing here from this section, though, this gets a little dicey. Whenever they're going to show you something, and you have to say what happened. So what? Describe a similarity because there's multiple things that could get you there. That maps PQRS to WX. I got cut off Y and U. Right, so that is the big one to the little one. Phew. So you know it changed the size, so there's gonna have to be a dilation in here sooner or later. So what could this have potentially done? Well, the best way to look at it, match up a letter, like take P and W. So P is at two, three, four, five, negative six, three. Oops, it's not prime, just P is at negative six, three. And we got to take that to W, which is at 2, comma 1. So how could we potentially get from negative 6, 3 to 2, comma 1? Well, you can see if we reflect this thing over the Y axis, so if we reflect, and it's kind of like trial and error a little bit. If we do a y-axis flip, then that would take p to, instead of being negative 6, 3, that would take it to 6, 3. All right. And then how could I get from 6, 3 to 2, 1? Well, just divide by 3. So first thing, if I reflect, and then... Dividing by 3 is the same as a dilation with the scale factor of 1 third. So that would take me from 2, 1 to 6, 3. So it shrunk. All right. And, or I guess I actually go this way with it. From there to there. So reflection at y-axis. And you can kind of look, if they give you a graph, it's real nice, and they usually will. So we can see here kind of like the orientation of this thing is it has to flip before it shrinks. And so there you go. So that is describing one that's already done for you.
And like I said, it's just trial and error. Get yourself a point and match up. I know the P matches up with the W, first letter, first letter. You can do it with any of them. They're all, they all have to do the same thing. So you could have taken like Q and X and et cetera. All right, so try this one. See what you guys come up with. Pause the little video here. All right, so now on this one, let's match up something that's, let's see, these are, this S is kind of in between. T's in between. F. Now, if I match F up, that's the third letter with U. That's the third letter. So F and U. So F is at 4, 0. And U, it ends up mapping from D or from F to U, which is at negative 2, 0. So how can I get from 4, 0 to negative 2, 0? So you know it's going to have to... So there's going to be a dilation in there at some point. And it's looking like, well, let's see, if we go positive to negative, one way to do that is to rotate 180. So let's see if we can do that. If I rotate 180, then F, starting at F, rotate 180 just flips everything. So that's, it flips the signs on everything, I'm sorry. So four zero turns into negative four zero. So that would go over to here. And then we could shrink it in by dilating it with a scale factor of, to go from, to go from this point to this point, I want to cut it in half. So that's going to be a scale factor of a half. All right, so there is a similarity transformation that would map it. And you might be like, well, you could do this in one step with the negative, but they want a similarity transformation that takes you two steps. All right. So, guys, 4, 6, nothing really new other than the GeoGebra. It's all just combining dilation with something else. Peace!